What is the best aperture for video? It's f2.8 or t2.8 if you're thinking t-stops. And before you ask, t2.8 is for the Super 35mm sensor. That's close enough to APS-C2. For full frame 35mm sensors, this would be about a t4. You can stop now and watch another one of my amazing 10 second videos, or you could stick around and I'll tell you why 2.8 is the best aperture. Are you democratic? Then you'll be easier to convince. I've studied the work of hundreds of cinematographers, and the t-stop they like to most of the time is t2.8. This corresponds to about f2.5 or thereabouts, but you can assume it's f2.8 for the sake of your sanity. Again, this is for Super 35mm or thereabouts, because that's what most films have been shot on, because that's the format that approximates what most films have been shot on. There are other formats, but then the popular aperture number will change. It changes if you're going to academy frame, for example, and it definitely changes with anamorphic. So why do cinematographers pick T 2.8? Four reasons. The aperture number, called F number, decides how big the aperture opening is. The higher the number, the smaller the aperture, and the lesser the light hitting the sensor. Cinematographers always had to fight the low sensitivities of film stock. Today, most cinema cameras have a native ISO of 800, and that's just for starters. But a few decades ago, they were working with an exposure index of 50 to 200 most times, generally speaking. There are exceptions, but you had to give up image quality. Nowadays, film stock has an exposure index of 250, 500, which is about 1,000 ISO, because the corresponding ISO is about double the exposure index according to Kodak. In short, they didn't have the low light abilities modern cameras have. This meant they had to open up the aperture for good exposure or use too much light. Too much light would have cooked film sets and the actors well over legal tanning limits. They had to strike a good balance between practical lighting and what is tolerable. T2.8 was a good happy medium, just short of war. And this is just one reason. The second is when you open up the aperture, you get shallower depth of field. If you stop down or close down the aperture, you get deeper depth of field. This is why movies like Citizen Kane had to use tons of light for their deep focused look. If you want everything in the frame to be in focus, you must stop down the aperture. This cuts light by a tremendous amount. Every step in the aperture scale cuts one stop of light or double the light. The other end of the spectrum is shallow depth of field, where you have no clue where the actor is. To get this effect, you open up the aperture to its highest rating, sometimes T2 or T1.3 on traditional cinema glass, if you had the option. These lenses were available back in the day when cinematographers used T2.8. The Godfather was shot with Bosch and Lom Super Baltars that were T2.3, and The Taxi Driver was shot on Zeiss Super Speeds that were T1.4. Some scenes in Taxi Driver were shot wide open, especially the night shots. But most of the film wasn't shot in T1.4. So why didn't these cinematographers open the aperture all the way if they could have? Because there's no free lunch. Lenses in those days weren't as advanced as today. So if you opened the aperture all the way, you had three major problems. First, you had too much flare. Flare is not just those cool streaks of light you see. It's also a loss of contrast. Imagine going through all the trouble of learning about film stock and lighting only for something stupid like lens flare to ruin your shot through lack of contrast. The second problem was also serious. The lenses weren't that sharp, wide open. This is true of almost every lens on the planet, with a few rare exceptions. Lenses are not the sharpest when wide open. The general rule of thumb is lenses have to be stopped down by two stops for best sharpness. For example, if you have an f1.4 lens, you have to stop down to f2.8 for best sharpness. This also meant if you use different focal lengths, the sharpness across the entire range matched. This is the biggest problem with cheap lenses that open to f1.4 or higher today. They don't match across the entire set. Great cine lenses like the Arri Master Prime series open to T1.3 across the entire range. You'll never find an equivalent photo lens series that all open to a T1.3 at any price. The Master Primes are known to perform very well at T1.3. They're sharp and cinematic, but even these lenses are sharper stopped down to T2.8. 
The last reason cinematographers stopped down was probably the most important one. Shallow depth of field also meant focus pullers had a terrible time following actors. Remember, they didn't have monitors in those days. Focus pullers had to use all their experience and concentration to keep the moving actor in focus. Today there are aids, but unfortunately high resolution has balanced that out. Focus mistakes are way more obvious in 4K and unforgiving in 8K. So whatever advantage monitors and electronic systems have introduced, higher resolution has taken away. It's still hard to focus moving subjects at T1.4 in 8K. Force focus pullers to do that and there will be a contract out for your life. T2.8 provided cinematographers the best balance between shallow depth of field and deep focus, even visually. You can make out the background, which was and continues to be important in film. Nobody wants a completely mushy background, otherwise it will look like it was shot in a studio. The third reason to pick T2.8 is very few people can afford deep focus. When I shot Man May Love, I stopped down the Aerie Master Anamorphics with T8 and compensated by raising my ISO to 6400, which is the limit for the Red Monstro. Even then, I felt I didn't have enough light. There is another problem with stopping down the lens. When you cross a certain threshold, typically f11 for Super 35mm sensors, you lose sharpness due to something called diffraction. The explanation is quite technical, but all you have to know is, just because you can stop down to T22 doesn't mean you should. You'll get softer images. With full frame, it's about a T8. Just like with everything else in life, a happy medium is the best for the aperture as well. And it's not like cinematographers sat down and decided these things cerebrally. They didn't even vote for it. It came about organically through practical limitations of cinematography, cameras, lenses, and lighting over many, many decades of filmmaking. For all these trade-offs, they got a lot in return. They got the ability to stay consistent with their lighting and exposure. They could achieve the great images we love so much, even in the high-stakes, high-pressure environment of a Hollywood film, because they were able to keep many things constant. This is why, over about a hundred years of cinema, T2.8 came to be the most preferred aperture for normally lit scenes. For low light night scenes, cinematographers typically prefer T2. Again, all this is for the Super 35mm sensor or any format close to Super 35mm. Today, due to the improvements in ISO and sensitivity in digital cameras, cinematographers can use a wider aperture range. Here's something cool. Look at the classic popular zoom lenses for cinema. They are close to T2.8, T2.95, or T3. Even photography zoom lenses are consistent across all brands at f2.8. Look at B&H. Even they let you find lenses with apertures above f2.8 or higher because they know that's the popular threshold. So T2.8 or f2.8 is the best aperture for filmmaking if you're feeling democratic. You can open the aperture as wide as you want or you can stop down as much as you want. Not everybody sticks to T2.8 all the time. There are always exceptions. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.